All right, I'm going to be real brief because you don't need to hear me talk. You need to hear this next speaker talk. I would be willing to bet you, because I follow politics for a living, that most of you did not take notice in December of 2006 when this next speaker took the stage as governor of the state of Alaska. I'd be willing to bet that you didn't notice then but by God, and I use that phrase intentionally, by God, you certainly noticed about a year and a half later when she took the stage as a vice presidential nominee running with John McCain, and you took notice when she took on the mainstream leftist media, and you took notice when she unashamedly proclaimed that she was a proud conservative, a proud female conservative, and the original Mama Grizzly, ladies and gentlemen, Put your hands together for the one and only Governor Sarah Palin! Hello, Alabama! Roll Tide and War Eagle. Yep. It is so nice to get to be here, really, and to um, pretty much thaw out. It was already getting chilly at home when we left last night. Snow on the mountains. So I was so happy to get to land here and not a snowflake in sight. It's good to be here, though, home of some great, certainly great football champions and great patriots and your former Senator Jeff Sessions and the next Senator of the U great United States will be represented by Judge Roy Moore coming from Alabama, thanks to you. You know, I followed the judge's career for many years and you know, he was deplorable before deplorable was cool. He's always been an inspiration through these years. So are you ready to send the loudest message that you can send to DC at this time? The loudest message to the swamp. Are you ready to tell them, here comes the judge? We need you, Alabama. Alabama, remember it was here in 2015 that Senator Sessions defied the political establishment when he put his support behind a long-shot candidate who promised to make America great again. It was here that Sessions, remember, he put on that white cap, make America great again, and he declared, this isn't a campaign, this is a movement. And that movement grew from about 10,000 Alabama folk to tens of millions of Americans who had said, enough is enough, the status quo has got to go. It grew and grew and it roared and it rumbled and it shocked the world in November. The forgotten man and woman in this country, they stood up and we beat the swamp. But alas, 10 months later, guys, the, the swamp, it's trying to hijack this presidency. The swamp is trying to steal the victory that we worked so long and hard for. To steal the victory that a lot of us put our reputations on the line for. We voted to put America first, not the political elite that had ignored us for decades. We voted for a big, beautiful wall, not more amnesty deals. We voted for local control of education, not for candidates who are loving on Common Core and want big government to produce more Common Core. That is just strange. We voted to get rid of Obamacare as we'd been promised for eight years. We didn't vote for Mitch McConnell to fumble the football yet again and just shrug and say, well, ooh, sorry, I guess it's here to stay. Right now, though, the D.C. swamp, knowing that we had been promised some very specific things in 2015, 2016, promised these things, knowing that we're coming to collect, well, 
they're not taking it well. The Uniparty, the swamp, they're trying to convince the president that, well, he doesn't have to deliver on his promises. Trying to make him think, eh, if he just runs some more weird gadget plays, well, maybe he'd be more popular in the grandstands, and then he'd win the big game. Now, what they're saying is, President, cave on amnesty for illegal aliens. That's what they're telling him. They're saying, rethink the, uh, the climate accord. They're saying, pal around with Chuck and Nancy, because Schumer and Pelosi, yeah, they got your six. That's what they're saying. They're whispering, don't build the wall. But you all in Alabama know that trick plays, they may razzle-dazzle, but it is the time-tested fundamentals, like an impenetrable defense and a sound running game, that's what wins championships. Judge Moore, he knows the fundamentals, he's got the fundamentals, rule of law, no illegal immigration, no bad trade deals, and the importance of God, and our shared American culture and our heritage. Judge Moore is gonna defend our interests with the same still spine that he defended those Ten Commandments. And by the way, I don't think there's any cooler nickname you could have than the Ten Commandment Judge. That's a badge of honor. Judge Moore is a man of principle, and what he says, when he says it, he's going to do it. Take it to the bank. And that's why we need him in D.C. right now. A vote for Judge Moore isn't a vote against the president. It is a vote for the people's agenda that elected the president. It's for this big, beautiful movement that we're all a part of. The president needs support to keep the promises that elected him. So we're sending Trump someone who has our back, not Mitch McConnell's. That's the takeaway. Someone who has the people's back. Make no mistake, Big Luther is Mitch McConnell's guy. Big Luther is, and this is strange to me, this is strange. Big Luther, getting the job of the temporary Senate seat, being handed the job by the politician, who's now gone because of corruption, whatever, being handed the job by the politician he was to be investigating, I don't know, I don't know what you guys call it. Up in Alaska, we'd call it quid pro quo, which I think is an old Eskimo term for that what fertilizes the swamp. <laughs> no more swamp creatures. The swamp doesn't want to be drained. And they're snarling and they're biting back and they're using every dirty trick in the book to smear the judge and they're dumping millions and millions of dollars in this state to spread lies. And they're afraid. They should be afraid. Because, why? The judge is a threat to their power. Because he's on our side. He's on our side. And they know it. And they know that he's not one of them. To them, it's doggone it. And to us, it's like, oh, you betcha. Yeah, he's, he's not one of them. So they know that they can't control him. He answers to you. Justice Sessions had answered to Alabama. Now, thankfully, you all get to send the loud, clear message to Washington, to the swamp. On Tuesday, you get to tell them, hey, our movement isn't over, and it's not slowing down. Our movement is still roaring and rumbling across this country, and we will not be the forgotten man and woman. And we will not be satisfied with more broken promises from Republicans who campaign one way and they govern another. Here's the beauty of this, Alabama. When you send Judge Moore to D.C., he's going to be an inspiration for the rest of the country, for other candidates across the country to rise up and take on their own swamp creatures in their own states. 
This movement gained steam here with Trump and Sessions. It is going to continue here Tuesday when you vote for the judge. The swamp can't win here. This is our red line. Just you watch. Drain that swamp. This is our line in the sand. Alabama, our line in the sand. The eyes of the entire nation are on you. You can show Washington how to win. Show them how to keep their promises. And together we can show them how to make America great again. Alabama, your next United States Senator, Judge Roy Moore. Y'all are a good-looking crowd, now I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> Thank you very much. This was a wonderful evening, and uh, I'm glad to get this past us. We've got four more days, and then the Tuesday, I hope everybody's going to vote. Tuesday, we haven't won, so, you, but thank you very much for coming out tonight, and uh, I, I'm humbled by following Saran Stacy and Dr. Gorsuch and, and, and Dr. Uh, and Sarah Palin at, I'm not the speaker that they are. Um, I, I'm not near as pretty as she is. <laughs> but thank y'all for coming. Remember, you know, this is a very important election. I don't know that other people realize that, but everybody in Washington, as I said tonight, is watching this election. I don't have their vision of how it's going to affect America, but they're watching for the 2018 senatorial elections coming up. And they see that this could bring a change in our direction of the country. So this is a very important election. And I appreciate y'all being here tonight very much. You know, when we started this, we never imagined what we'd have to go through. But God's brought us through. Without God, you know, I, I was given the opportunity the other day and I was talking about the division in our society. Black and white, red and yellow. And I probably got some reporters here, they're going to repeat that. And I was thinking of the song, Red and Yellow, Black and White, They're Precious in His Sight, Jesus Loves the Little Children of the World. They don't know that in some parts of this country. They're so politi politically correct, they've been, become politically stupid. We need to bring back the understanding of God morality and the Constitution of the United States and that's what we're going to do as I said tonight I know that y'all have watched that already but we can be great again but the one thing politicians don't talk about is how we're going to be good again and we, we, we can't be good to the heart changes and God is the author of that so we we're going to stand for one nation under God and we're going to bring it back to Washington to see they don't want to hear the truth up there. Not everybody. Some want to hear the truth, but there's a lot that don't. And we're going to bring it back. And I thank you all for your support. Go to RoyMoore.org if you have any questions about my campaign. And uh, I know you all came to see Sarah Palin. That's why I came. <laughs> But God bless you, and uh, y'all have a good evening. Thank you.